In the evening, as usual, the town club was crowded. Music played loudly from the speaker, and in the centre of the hall, in a cloud of acrid cigarette smoke, several girls were moving rhythmically. Lillian, you're the prettiest one here tonight, grinned one of them, Margaret. Only, I don't know who you're trying so hard for. I'm just in a good mood, laughed Lillian. Do you really think I'm interested in any of our country boys? Well, what about George? asked Margaret. He would do anything for you. Lillian looked at her friend with a smile and snorted contemptuously, saying that she deserved more than George, and she would surely get her prince in a fancy car who would take her to his mansion. Margaret looked at her friend doubtfully and shrugged. Okay, let's go home. We have to work tomorrow, said Margaret, and pulled Lillian in the direction of the exit. They were followed by the guys who wanted to walk them home from the club. George was one of them. He looked at Lillian embarrassedly, and she grinned and condescendingly let him walk along. The young man kept silent, but when they came to Lillian's house, he finally decided to confess his feelings for her and asked her to date him. Believe me, you will be the happiest woman with me, George began to persuade her passionately. I'll certainly be happy, but not with you, rudely replied Lillian, and disappeared into the house without even saying goodbye. George stood for a while and went home. He was upset, but he had not lost hope. He was sure that Lillian would change her attitude toward him when he bought her a beautiful ring. He only had to wait for the bonus that was due to him at the end of the month as the best mechanic. For the next few days, all George could think about was Lillian, but no matter how many times he tried to talk to her, the girl would slip away with a disgruntled look on her face. At the end of the month, George went to the neighbouring city and bought the most beautiful ring, which took all of his bonus and salary. His mother was angry at him for a long time afterward, but George was pleased because now Lillian just wouldn't resist. But it turned out differently. Well, what do I need it for? grumbled the girl when one evening George handed her the ring. Waste of money only. Didn't you like it? asked George bitterly. Lillian, I love you. I want to marry you. That's it. I'm fed up with you, George. You should understand I'm not for you, exclaimed Lillian and slammed the door in front of his face. George stood there in a complete stupor for several minutes, when he came to his senses and finally realised that all his dreams had been shattered. He went into the first bar he saw and got very drunk for the first time in his life. Meanwhile, Lillian was already rushing on the train toward her dream. The girl had long dreamed of leaving the countryside for the city and had no regrets. The quiet life in the backwater town, her mother, who was constantly drinking, and those ordinary guys who were steadily imposing themselves as boyfriends. She was finally fed up with it all. She believed that things would be very different in the city. On her first day, she rented a small apartment to pair with another girl and took a job at a cafe as a waitress. A year passed. Lillian enjoyed city life. She was making good money and even managed to save a little money. Life seemed to Lillian a real fairy tale. The only thing missing was a prince, who also soon appeared. Lillian noticed Frederick even before he entered the cafe. The man got out of a fancy car, was fashionably dressed, and his expensive watch gleamed on his hand. Lillian immediately realised that she had finally met the long-awaited millionaire. The man also paid attention to Lillian. They exchanged phone numbers, and soon a stormy romance began between them. Within a week, the girl moved in with Frederick in his luxurious apartment, and dreamed only of legalising their relationship. After finding out that she was pregnant, Lillian rejoiced and hurried to inform Frederick, expecting his decisive action. 
Is it true? smiled Frederick. I am so happy. What are we going to do next? asked Lillian hopefully, not hearing the marriage proposal. Next is a long and happy life together, and of course, a wedding, he said joyfully, and kissed the girl tenderly on the nose. Lillian was over the moon and threw herself into her beloved's arms. Then Frederick began to prepare to his business and Lillian to work. But standing in the hallway, Frederick suddenly hesitated and looked puzzled at the phone screen. Is something wrong, dear? asked Lillian affectionately. Oh, it's nothing. It's just that the money I transferred from my account hasn't arrived at my card. There must be some error in the application. It's bad timing. I have to pay 20000 to the seller of the convertible I got delivered from Europe. Hmm, what should I do now? Oh, that's not a problem at all. Let me give it to you, Lillian eagerly responded. I managed to put some aside. Darling, you just saved me, exclaimed Frederick. I'll return everything to you tonight. Come on, honey, we're already family, smiled Lillian, and together they headed to the cash machine. And in the evening, when Lillian, as usual, waited for Frederick at the cafe, he didn't appear. His phone was unavailable, and Lillian became worried. She waited for him all night in his apartment, and in the morning, the doorbell rang. Lillian rushed to open it, rejoicing that Frederick had finally returned. But to her great dismay, there was a middle-aged woman on the threshold. She pushed Lillian aside and resolutely entered the apartment, looking for someone. So where is this swindler, Brian? asked the strange woman menacingly. He hasn't paid my rent in two months. I'm not going to put up with it any more. Brian? surprised Lillian. Only Frederick and I live here. I don't know. He introduced himself to me as Brian, declared the woman. Anyway, you deal with him yourself, and I have to ask you to leave my apartment immediately. Lillian was stunned to realise that she had become the victim of a conman and an Alphonse. The girl was angry at herself for being too trusting. In this situation, she couldn't return the money, but she needed to do something about her pregnancy and as soon as possible. At the clinic, the doctor immediately warned Lillian that after the abortion, she would probably not be able to have more children because of her negative RH factor. The prospect of being left alone in a foreign city with a baby in her arms did not make Lillian happy. But imagining that she would never be able to give birth to a son to her future husband frightened her even more, and she decided to give birth. After giving birth, Lillian did not turn into a perfect mother, but she felt responsible for the newborn son so she tried her best, and luckily for her, her roommate Rebecca helped her in everything. After six months, Lillian returned to work at the cafe. She lived modestly, but thoughts of a rich husband did not leave her. And then one day, an Italian tourist in his fifties dropped by her cafe. He immediately paid attention to Lillian and invited her to the restaurant in the evening. Although her son was waiting for her at home, Lillian agreed, persuading Rebecca to sit with Tyler for a longer time. Raphael charmed Lillian from the very first evening, and she felt incredibly happy when she returned every morning from his hotel. A month later, Raphael told her he was going back home and invited Lillian to fly with him. The woman was just waiting for that, immediately agreed, but when the conversation came about the baby, Raphael's reaction puzzled her. No, I don't need a baby in my house. The man waved his hands. I have grown children myself. Why would I want someone else's baby? I don't want to complicate my life. Yes, of course you are right, confused Lillian. But what to do with Tyler? Look, 
Our plane leaves at ten in the evening. I'll buy you a ticket, but only one, Raphael replied, leaving Lillian alone with her problem. Lillian hesitated. On the one hand, Tyler and hard life here, and on the other hand, a secure life with Raphael in Italy. After a couple of hours, she made up her mind. Rebecca was not at home, and Lillian wrote her a letter telling her that she was leaving for good and asked her to take Tyler to her mother. Then Lillian gathered her things, woke the child, and took him to an elderly neighbor, whom she asked to look after the boy while she supposedly would go to the store for milk. I'm sorry, baby, but I can't do otherwise, she whispered in the boy's ear and closed the door behind her. Then she got into a prearranged cab and went to the airport, while little Tyler was still sitting on the elderly old lady's couch, anxiously looking at the front door and waiting for his mother. Rebecca came home from work late. She read the letter and immediately took Tyler away from her neighbor. She was shocked that Lillian could do such a thing. The woman barely managed to calm down, because Tyler was crying and wouldn't stop calling out for his mother until he fell into a restless sleep. The next day, Rebecca took a little leave and went to visit Lillian's mother. But when she arrived in the town, she quickly realized that the woman was a long-time alcoholic woman and did not want to hear anything about her daughter or her grandson. Upset, Rebecca went to the nearby store to buy water and asked a saleswoman if Lillian had any other relatives in town. At that moment, George walked in. When he heard about what Lillian had done, he was stunned, not understanding how he could ever have wanted to marry such a heartless woman. George and Rebecca walked out of the store together, and the man invited her to tea and walked her to the bus in the evening. A couple of days later, he came to visit her in the city, and six months later, they got married and adopted Tyler. Twenty years passed. George and Rebecca were living in the city, where they had their own business. One day, George was walking down the street and heard someone call out to him. He turned around and was dumbfounded. Lillian was standing three steps away from him, she looked much older than her years, her eyes were tired, and she looked a bit shabby. I hardly recognize you. You look so good, she said admiringly. How are you? Hi, Lillian, I'm fine. I moved to the city, as you can see, George answered discreetly. What about you? Lillian said that she had lived in Italy for a long time, but her Italian husband had bequeathed everything to his children, and after his death, she had to return to the homeland without a penny to her name. Now, she was working as a waitress again. The woman wondered if her former admirer was married. When she found out that he had a wife, Rebecca, and two children, Claire and Tyler, she turned pale. George noticed this. Yes, Lillian, he is your son, said George. We adopted him. Tyler is an athlete, and his coach says he has a great future. My little son, whispered Lillian. Can I see him? Why? You made your choice when you traded him for an Italian and left him with strangers. Having uttered this, George went on his way without saying goodbye and Lillian stood looking after him for a long time, realizing that she had so many opportunities to be happy in her life, but she had missed them so foolishly and hopelessly. <laughs>